Welcome to MCOM Solutions, Jake here. We're gonna talk metastatic, but we're gonna get into the weeds here a little bit. If you're in the United States, this is specifically catered towards that audience uh, for your countries or, or, or regions uh, regulations. You just need to look that up or maybe you can find somebody else that's talked about it here on YouTube. But we're gonna get into some of the compliance and rules. You still don't need a license, which is a good thing to operate a metastatic device using LoRa long range, low power radio protocols for a peer to peer mesh networking in the 902 to 928 megahertz. You know, metastatic in the US is advertised as 915, but it's different than that. I'll show you that here uh, in the video in a second. We'll kind of unlock the secrets of the FCC. Probably can't achieve that here in this video today. I'm not sure anyone could, <laughs> but we'll at least, you know, show you kind of what it's, what it says about part 15, which is the part of the FCC rules that regulate this ISM ban. Um, so, and then we're going to navigate or we're going to talk about staying compliant, staying connected. The whole point here is I'm presenting you with information, uh, for your awareness, what you do with that information, how you operate, that's for you to decide. Uh, but at least, you know, so, uh, and then we'll address any of the compliance concerns and just go into, uh, one of the things, the biggest things that a user may do, right. Is depending on the device that you get, you know, like this original T deck here or the T deck one, as some people call it, once you start changing antennas, you could potentially be in uh gray areas or out of compliance with fcc rules so let's take a look key rules for lower devices lower devices including those running metastatic typically operate under fcc part 15.247 which governs unlicensed radio frequencies using spread spectrum techniques in 900 to 902 to 928 megahertz the relevance of this rule depends on whether the devices are using digital modulation or frequency hopping spread spectrum. Uh, Mestastic use, uses chip or excuse me, chirp spread spectrum, which is uh, CSS, or a lot of people just refer to it as chirp modulation, which generally classifies it under digital mod, uh, the modulation clause in part 15, uh, rather than uh, frequency hopping spread spectrum that it doesn't do the channel hopping like frequency hopping spread spectrum chirp or CSS does not. So this kind of governs what, what they can do with this band and what we'll try to break down as basically we can here, but the primary requirements under this rule using CSS is a minimum six DB bandwidth or the 500 kilohertz problem. The rule states the 6 dB bandwidth of transmitted signals must be at least 500 kilohertz. FCC rule right there under part 15, 247. Um, so what is the relevance to this? Well, uh, you know, <laughs> LoRa supports bandwidths such as 125 kilohertz, 250 kilohertz, and 500 kilohertz. The FCC compliance of metastatic devices must use a bandwidth of 500 kilohertz or greater to meet the requirements. However, metastatic devices default uh, modem setting presets for long fast often use narrower bandwidths, i.e. 125 and 250 to optimize range, which is not compliant with the 500 kilohertz requirement under digital modulation clause. Now, I would love to hear more about this. If you're a FCC guru, please let me know where I'm wrong, but this is what I could find in my research. Uh, this raises potential compliance issues. Narrow bandwidths fall under uh, FCC's part 15, 2, 4, 5, which imposes stricter power limits. So maximum power output rule. 
This is the part where we're going to talk about the devices a little bit. I'm going to break it down. I'll show you a graph here to kind of just visually demonstrate, you know, one of your things you probably should consider when you're operating one of these. It's up to you. All right, so I created just a simple representation here uh, just to help put in my words kind of into a visual representation. So the non-compliance scenario, as you see there in the red, is 39 dBm. The bar exceeds the 36 dBm limit, uh, reaching 39, right? So which this occurs with a modification to the device in the firmware, like increasing the power output to 26 dBm, dBm and using a 12 dBi, you know, the high gain type outdoor antennas. This uh, would obviously violate the rules under part 15. Now, if you look at the other one, um, it's so the example, like with a rack uh, device, uh, 4631 or 4630, uh, producing about 22 dBm. If you haven't changed the settings in the uh, in the Mestastic app, and a 2 dBi antenna, like the one they provide, which is they're not the greatest antennas, but uh, and then a basic calculation factor of about 0.5 dB cable loss, your ERP would equal about 23.5 dB, uh, dBm. So obviously with a better antenna, if you added in like, like a 5 dBi or 6 dBi antenna, um, you could probably push the limits of to the 36 and, you know, get more transmission power, uh, pushing out that lower device and maximize your range. All right. So wrap up really, as I mentioned there in the beginning, this is just for your awareness. You can do with this information as you choose, uh, as a, to be a more aware and more knowledgeable Mestastic user. Understanding those rules also helps you kind of understand some of the basics and how this, all the little magic inside these boxes works. Uh, and just understanding antennas and cable loss and things like that. We could talk about that in the future if, if that's something people are interested in. But if, if you have questions or concerns or what are you thinking, put them in the comment section down below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, check out our website, social media links, affiliate links, much more down below in the details section. Thanks for watching.